Welcome back to Ligari, guys. I'm gonna show you awesome techniques for our sample kits. If you guys have never tried our epoxy, order one today. You'll see the difference in the resin. It's awesome, super simple to use, and you get amazing looks every time. So we're gonna show you three easy techniques that you can do at your home by yourself in record time. Enjoy the video. So I'm gonna go over the unboxing of our sample kits. I'm just gonna explain to you what comes in the kit. So you're gonna get your box. You're gonna get your two metallic colors. We're gonna have our two stir sticks. And then we're gonna have four containers here. We need to make sure that we use the right container. So for our, for our base coat, we're gonna use the large container, four ounces and we're gonna use a two ounce part B container, right? That's half of four ounces is two ounces. So these two are gonna go together. And then we have these smaller containers. These are gonna be our highlights. So we have two ounces of part A, half of that is one ounce, one ounce of the hardener. So now we know these two go together. So I'm just gonna set these off to the side before I even start. And I'm just gonna focus on my base coat. I'm gonna mix these together. I'm gonna add my color and then I'm gonna apply that to the board. And then when those are done, I'm gonna mix up my highlights, add these two together. I'm gonna add the color and then I'm gonna do my highlights. That way we don't get these mixed up and you run the chance of your resin being soft or staying liquid. So make sure you separate those out before you start. All right, so I'm gonna go over mixing, uh, everything about mixing on this first board and then the next three, I'll just show you the techniques using different colors. So first thing you guys want to do when you're when you're uh, getting your board set up is make sure they're level both ways right if this isn't level you'll come back and you'll all run to one side it'll totally ruin your board so take the time get it level as you can see we've kind of shimmied some of the legs up to get all these level nice and level so once you got that done we're basically ready so I'm gonna be doing a silver base on here and I have my highlight uh, material off to the side that way I don't get it screwed up so we're gonna start with our four ounces of part A. We're gonna open this container and then we're gonna add our two ounces of part B, the hardener. It's gotta be two to one. So half of four is two ounces. So we'll add this into the larger container. We wanna scrape it all out. Scrape the bottom. We're just trying to get as much of that out as we can. And then we're gonna mix that for about a minute. We wanna scrape the sides as we're mixing. Make sure we push down on those edges. We wanna run it across the bottom here. Get in the corners down there. And then we'll add our metallic powder. And again, this is our base coat. So this will be the majority of the board. And you wanna kinda of start out a little slow. You don't wanna splash the color out. It is a really fine powder. And then we'll mix this for another 30, 30 seconds to a minute. We have that mix, we're gonna apply it to the whole board. And I'm using a chip brush. The chip brushes or brushes don't come with the kit. You wanna make sure you have a brush. We don't like to use rollers on the sample boards because the rollers will soak up a lot of that epoxy and it'll make your, your board a lot thinner. So 
Uh, if you're doing like swirl designs or something, you can do the same thing with the paintbrush and get the similar effect as a roller. Uh, so just keep that in mind when you guys are buying whatever supplies you might need. So we're gonna just pour this out close to the edges, but not close enough to where it's gonna run off. And as long as you've scraped your sides good while mixing in the bottom, you can really get everything out of there. And then we're just gonna kinda paint the epoxy over the whole board here. Again, we're not trying to run the product off yet. We're just trying to get this as, as even as we can. It's gonna self-level, so it doesn't have to be perfect. And if you have any paint hairs or, or these brush hairs in there, you can pick those out. I had a couple in here. And then I like to paint my edges once I'm done with the top. It'll just make the board look a lot nicer when it's dry. Okay, so the board's coated with our base coat now. Um, the next step is to mix up our highlight material. Now we're gonna mix up our highlight. We have our two ounces of part A, and then half of that is one ounce. So here's our one ounce of part B. So we're gonna pour the part B into the part A. Just like we did on the base coat, we're gonna get as much of that out as we can. And if you wanna use a bigger cup or something to pour these two into, that's totally fine. Again, try to get as much out of that as we can. And then we're gonna mix that up for about 30 seconds to a minute. We're gonna add our metallic colors here. This is gonna be our deep blue. All right, so we have our blue mixed up. Now this is obviously quite a bit of blue. I'm gonna show you guys like a simple vein technique, really skinny veins. So we're not gonna use very much of this. That's the biggest mistake some people make is they're going for a subtle vein technique and they wind up using all the highlight and it just overpowers the counter. So we're doing small amounts here. So we're gonna let it drip off a little and then we're just gonna run it kind of randomly through the counter. And you can see like, I'm not using a lot here. And you can always add more. You can't really take it away. So we'll start with that. And then to mimic just swirling a counter, we're just gonna swirl it like this real quick. So this is kind of what you would do with your roller. This will kind of give you that same effect.
and then it kind of looks like the blues kind of all disappeared. It will pop back. Um, but again, if, if you wanted more, you would just add a little more. Um, and I'll show you what, what you would do. You would try to find the same blue spots that you had. And we would just kind of add some more veins in those same exact spots. Again, this is gonna pop back again. Every time you swirl something, the highlight color kind of gets muted and it does come back once it starts leveling out and marbleizing. And then we would just do the same thing again. Just, just a real quick swirl. Just trying to be really light. That's pretty much it. If you guys have, if you guys get bubbles or anything or have debris, we hardly ever get bubbles or have issues, but you can take your clear isopropyl or even denatured alcohol and just, instead of doing the drips like we show you, we wanna just spritz the surface with a mist, just real quick. And that'll pop any bubbles that you might have. You can kind of see the veins already starting to come back out. In about 10, 15 minutes, they'll be really noticeable. And then obviously if you have debris or something, like we got a we got a brush here right here. Pick this out. So you can pick stuff out like that that's in there. Um, and then if you wanna, you know, do your edges again, I'll just grab stuff from the that's dripped off and I'll just paint on my edge again. That'll make your edges look even better doing one more coat on those, but it's up to you. So there's one really simple technique, any colors you can use to get this look, that's kind of the look you would get. Um, so now we'll, we'll, we'll go to the next look, different colors, and we'll show you guys another technique. All right, so we're gonna show you another technique. We've already got our colors mixed up. We showed you guys the mixing process on the first board, and you guys can see right now that blue is really starting to pop out. So it's really subtle, looks absolutely amazing. So, and look at how much highlight we didn't use. So again, if you're going for a nice, subtle, small vein look, you, barely any highlights is what you need. All right, so we have our uh, orange gold mixed up for our base. So we're gonna spread this out. And we'll take the paintbrush, kind of coat the whole board. And we've already leveled this board. All these boards have been leveled. You do not want to forget that step. Make sure you level the boards. All right, so our base coat's down. Once that's down, you would mix up your highlights. So I've already mixed up my highlights, so they're ready to go. And we're gonna be doing a simple wood grain technique using our hands. Really fun, really simple. So we're gonna take our highlight, which is our brass, and we're just gonna pour out some straight lines up and down the counter. Some are gonna go all the way, some aren't gonna go all the way. 
the more random we can be, the cooler this will look. Having wider areas and thinner areas is gonna help too. So now we have that. Now we're gonna incorporate some black spray paint. And we're gonna spray randomly throughout the board. Kind of in a line pattern. Again, not going all the way up and down. Get some on our edges here. And then we'll take our fingers and we'll just go straight up and straight down. Notice how I'm pushing all the way off the board as I come down. You don't wanna, you don't wanna start and then move over because you're gonna leave a little line there of sliding your hand sideways. So I'm going all the way off the board. And you can stop at any point. It, uh, I'm kind of blending it just a tad more. And the cool thing about this technique is if we wanted to add more black, we would just spray more black, right? So say we wanted to, I wanted to add a little more black throughout here. I would just come back, spray the black. And then I would just hit that spot again. You don't necessarily have to hit the whole board. You just want to blend those spots in that you added color to. Maybe blend that in just a tad bit more. That's looking really good. So now you can leave it like that if you want to add some more effects and get some cells uh, in the black. We're going to just get the sprayer dropping smaller drops by barely pressing the trigger and we're going to hit the surface. And this is 91% isopropyl alcohol. Again, this, the, the more random drips you get, the cooler this will look. So a lot of these in the metallics will kind of disappear, but all the cells and stuff in the spray paint will kind of stay there. So it'll give a really cool and unique look. And even now, if you wanted to add more black, um, I'll kind of show you, you can add more black. If you had some, if you had some of the, the, the brass left, you could add, add more of that, right? So we'll come down. We'll run a little bit of this in there. So it's really cool. You can't, you can't screw this up. You can keep adding stuff to it. And then we'll add a little more black. Doesn't need much. And then again, you just run your, run your fingers up and down it. And you can do any color of spray paint. We just chose black. You could do white, a, a different color of brown. I mean, really any color. And any, any spray paint from Home Depot or Lowe's or even Walmart works. It doesn't matter what it is. And then you would just spritz it again. So real simple, really fun technique. Again, you can do this with any color. Um, these are just the two colors we showed you with how to do the technique with. Okay, so I'm getting ready to apply the base coat. I've already got it mixed up. Make sure your boards are level and make sure you've separated out your highlight material and your base coat material. So I've already done that. I have my base coat material here. Boards, board's been leveled. So I'm gonna apply this on the whole board.
All right, so when you're done applying your base coat, you're gonna mix up your highlight material. I've already got it mixed up here, so we don't have to watch that again. And before we pour that out, we're gonna take a, just a squeegee, uh, any type of squeegee plastic thing you can use. Um, and I'm just gonna kinda open up just some random spots throughout this counter, throughout this sample board here, where I can add that, our coffee color. We wanna, we wanna make sure we get spots right to the edge, kinda all throughout it. And then we're gonna take our coffee here and we're gonna apply that into these opened areas. Now, it's better to just start out with smaller puddles. That way we can make sure we get color all over the board and then we can go back and kinda of add to it. See, now I can go back and add to some of these that are maybe a little thinner. Maybe we'll add a little throughout there. Okay, so there's our, there's our coffee. Now we're gonna incorporate white spray paint. And what we're gonna do is spray the spray paint into a cup. So we're putting a rag over it. And we're just gonna spray that into a cup. And this is gonna give us the, the liquid form of spray paint. Now just keep in mind when you're doing, you can see the liquid form. When you're using spray paint like this, it will take the resin a little longer to set up and get fully hard, probably about a day or two longer than normal, but it will still get rock hard. So we're gonna, we're gonna just dump kind of like some just random, random piles throughout this, kind of in between all the, the brown spots. Again, we wanna make sure we get color right to the edges. Okay, now we're gonna take our squeegee again and we're just gonna lightly glide it across the surface. We wanna blend this enough to where it doesn't look like blobs were poured out, but we, we wanna not blend it too much to where it kinda all becomes a color. So real quick, notice I'm going different directions up and down, left and right. Again, we wanna blend it enough to where it doesn't look like just blobs of brown were poured out. And then once we're done with that, we'll lightly hit it. And again, you can leave it like this and let it level out and it'll look really amazing. Or we can add the isopropyl, which will give it more effects and cells. So we're just gonna spritz the surface. And again, it just gives you a really unique, like a granite look. And the white is gonna keep those, the white spray paint will keep these cells, all that uniqueness. And then the, the other colors will kind of come out a little bit as it starts leveling out. Just remember, you can use any spray paint colors. Any colors are, are metallics. These are just some ideas, some easy techniques for you guys to try when you're using our, our kits. All right, so when you're doing the dispersing effects with the isopropyl or denature, or even if you're missing spray paint and stuff, if you have thin spots of epoxy, I'm gonna try to recreate this for you. Uh, you'll get fish eyes. So what I'm gonna do is make a thin spot right here of resin and then I'm gonna kind of spritz this so what will happen is where it's thin it'll push the resin away that's what happens it disperses the surface and it'll, sometimes it'll go all the way down to your primer or all the way down to your board um, and if that happens all you do is just take your finger and you would just pat around that that fisheye area or that indent and that would that would get rid of 
your fisheye or the spot that has, right? It's all the way down to the board. So you, that's all you do. If you had a, say we had a fisheye right here, I would just tip pad around this and that would help fill it in. And then you can, if you want, disperse it, right? But usually just by patting it, that's all you need to do. And it'll kind of level itself out. So keep that in mind when you're doing the dispersing effects. And it's usually only where it's thin at. So you guys can see the three different techniques I use. They're all really simple. You guys can come up with your own. Again, you can use any colors you want with these, any color of spray paint, but these are probably some of the most popular techniques and the simplest. So thanks for watching. Make sure you guys send us the, the pics of your guys' boards. And remember, have fun.